he has to pay for what he's done. And it's not just our daughter, it's all the victims he needs to pay, pay justice to. Will prosecutors pursue the death penalty against Brian Koberger in the Idaho 4 murder case? DA and former law professor Stephen Mulroy discusses. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Thank you for coming today. Last night, in conjunction with the Pennsylvania State Police, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, detectives arrested 28-year-old Brian Christopher Kohlberger in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania, on a warrant for murder of Ethan, Zena, Madison, and Kaylee. I want to personally thank these agencies for their assistance in this case. As we've been reporting here on Sidebar and the Long Crime Network, Brian Koberger has been arrested and charged in connection with the Idaho 4 killing, specifically the alleged murders of University of Idaho students Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin, who were found stabbed to death on November 13th. Koberger was extradited back to Idaho from Pennsylvania, where he was arrested. He appeared before a judge during his first appearance, where he was asked some preliminary questions. He was read the charges that he now faces of four counts of first-degree murder and felony burglary. His next hearing is a status conference on January 12th. But as we have been saying, this is a new chapter in this case, because right now, the question that is coming up is, could prosecutors seek the death penalty? Well, Kaylee Gonsalves' parents said on News Nation with Ashley Banfield that they're in favor of it. Definitely. I'm assuming Definitely. that you are in favor of the death penalty yeah. for this Absolutely. defendant. If our daughters could switch places with him, and I'm saying Maddie is my daughter, um, we'd do it in a heartbeat if they could sit there and have three squares, uh, a place to live, and we could call them, we could write yeah. them letters, they could watch TV, they could do, get educated. I would love if Maddie and uh, Kaylee were doing life in prison right now. Yeah, so at least we could talk to them. That's not they'd be breathing a punishment equivalent to being killed. That's God's role. And if you want to play you know God's it. role, then you're going to have to you're going to have to go answer to him. So will prosecutors pursue the death penalty against Koberger and would a jury vote in favor of it? Well, let me bring in Stephen Mulroy, elected district attorney of Shelby County, Memphis, Tennessee, a former law professor from the University of Memphis and former federal prosecutor. He is an expert on the death penalty. Steve, thanks so much for taking the time. Oh, thank you for having me. So I'll start with the, bi the big one. Do you think prosecutors are going to pursue the death penalty against Koberger? I wouldn't be surprised uh, that Idaho is a uh, relatively... I think, a pro-death penalty jurisdiction. And under the law of Idaho, uh, first-degree murder is a death penalty-eligible offense. Now, the death penalty is supposed to be reserved for the worst of the worst. So not any first-degree murder would necessarily be the kind of case where you would seek the death penalty. But the statutes list aggravating factors, and one of them is if multiple murders are involved in the same incident, which we seem to have here. Do you think it's also the high profile nature of this case that if it wasn't so high profile, maybe it would be different? I mean, people are seeking justice. They want justice. It's a terrible case. Do you think this, the, the media impact of it, the high profile nature of it has an impact on the death penalty? Well, ideally, it shouldn't make a difference, right, Jesse? I mean, the idea is the prosecutor is supposed to look at the facts and the law and the circumstances and not consider any political pressure or the presence or absence of uh, media attention. But, you know, everyone are human beings, and inevitably, I think that kind of pressure might play a role. What about the reasons? You know, one thing that came out from this affidavit was a lot of how they were able to track him down, the evidence that supported a, uh, an arrest of him. What we didn't totally get was the why, right? And, and I'm curious if we don't ever understand why he did that. Do you think that plays into a factor as well? Well, you know, it's the big question that everyone's wondering, right? And I'm not even sure law enforcement knows right now what the motive for the killing was. The motive for the killing certainly can play a role in whether uh, the death penalty is sought or a jury, uh, you know, votes in favor of the death penalty. For example, murder for hire as a motive. That's one of the listed statutory aggravating factors. That would definitely tilt towards the death penalty. But, you know, you don't need to know the murder. As long as you know that this person intentionally killed four people, then that would be enough, I think, to get 
uh, you know, a pretty decent argument for a jury to vote in favor of the death penalty. You had mentioned that Idaho is a death penalty jurisdiction. I did some quick research on it. My count is that there are currently eight residents under the death penalty sentence in Idaho. Uh, most recently is Jonathan Daniel Renfro, who was uh, received the sentence in November 2017. He was convicted of first degree murder for the shooting death of a police officer. So I- I'm curious, in your experience, from what you've seen, how likely would it be if a death penalty circumstance goes in front of a jury in Idaho? that a jury would vote in favor of it? You know, I think there'd be a pretty decent chance, in particular in a case like this, you have multiple murders. You know, Idaho is a fairly uh, pro-death penalty jurisdiction. I imagine that your average jurors would be as well. So I think there's probably a, a, a decent chance that if the prosecutors sought the death penalty, they'd be able to uh, achieve it. Now, of course, When, if ever, the execution would actually be carried out is a whole different question. You know, there are many years, sometimes decades uh, of appeals. Very often you have um, people on death row who die on death row. All right, so we'll have to wait and see. Stephen Mulroy, thanks for taking the time. And that's all we have for you here on Sidebar, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.